Once, there was a gentleman who married for his second wife, the proudest and most holy woman that was ever seen. She had, by a former husband, two daughters of her own humor, who were indeed exactly like her in all things. He had likewise, by another wife, a young daughter, but of unparalleled goodness and sweetness of temper, which she took from her mother, who was the best creature in the world. No sooner were the ceremonies of the wedding over, but the mother-in-law began to show herself in her true colors. She could not bear the good qualities of this pretty girl, and the less because they made her own daughters appear the more odious. She employed her in the meanest work of the house. She scored the dishes, the tables. She scrubbed the madam's chamber and those of Mrs. her daughters. She lay up in a sorry garret upon a wretched straw bed, while her sisters lay in the fine rooms with floors all inlaid upon beds of the very newest fashion and where they had looking glasses so large that they might see themselves at their full length from head to foot. The poor old girl bore all patiently and dared not tell her father, who would have rattled her off, for his wife governed him entirely. When she had done her work, she used to go into the chimney corner and sit down among cinders and ashes, which made her commonly be called Cinderwatch. But the youngest, who was not so rude as the eldest, called her Cinderella. However, Cinderella was a hundred times handsomer than her sisters, though they were always dressed very richly. It happened that the king's son gave a ball and invited all persons of fashion to it. Our young misses were also invited, for they cut a very grand figure among the quality. They were mightily delighted at this invitation and wonderfully busy in choosing out such gowns, petticoats and head clothes as might become them. This was a new trouble to Cinderella, for it was she who ironed her sister's linen and plaited their ruffles. They talked all day long of nothing but how they should be dressed. Uh, for my part, said the eldest, I will wear my red velvet suit with French trimming. Uh, and I, said the youngest, uh, shall have my usual petticoat, uh, but then to make amends for that I will put on my gold-flowered manteau and my diamond stomacher, which is far from being the most ordinary one in the world. They sent for the best tire woman they could get to make up their headdresses and adjust their double pinners and they had their red brushes and patches from Mademoiselle de la Poche. Cinderella was likewise called up to them to be consulted in all these matters, for she had excellent notions and advised them always for the best. She offered her service to dress their heads, which they were very willing she should do. As she was doing this, they said to her, Oh, Cinderella, would you not be glad to go to the ball? Oh, said she. A ball is not a place for girls like me. You are right, they replied. It would make the people laugh to see a Cinderella at a ball. Anyone but Cinderella would have dressed their heads awful. But she was very good-hearted, and she dressed them perfectly well. They were almost two days without eating, so much were they transported with joy. They broke above a dozen laces in trying to be laced up close, 
that they might have a fine slender shape, and they were continually at their looking glass. At last, the happy day came. They went to court, and Cinderella followed them with her eyes as long as she could. And when she had lost sight of them, she fell crying. Her godmother, who saw her all in tears, asked her what was the matter. I wish, I wish I could, I wish I could. She was not able to speak the rest because she was interrupted by her tears and sobbing. But her godmother was a fairy and she said to her, Your wish is to go to the ball, isn't it? Yes, cried Cinderella. Well, said her godmother, run to the garden and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella went immediately to gather the finest she could get and brought it to her godmother, not being able to imagine how this pumpkin could make her go to the ball. Her godmother scooped out all the inside of it, having left nothing but the weight. Which done, she struck it with her magic wand, and the pumpkin was instantly turned into a fine coat, glided all over with gold. She then went to look into her mouse trap, where she found six mice, all alive, and ordered Cinderella to lift up a little the trapdoor, when, giving each mouse as it went out, a little tap with her wand, the mouse was that moment turned into a fine horse, which altogether made a very fine set of six horses of a beautiful mouse-colored dapple grey. Being at a loss for a coachman, I will go and see, says Cinderella, if there is another rat in the rat trap, we may make a coachman out of him. You are right, replied the godmother. Go and look. Cinderella brought the trap to her, and in it there were three huge rats. The fairy made choice of one of the three which had the largest beard, and having touched him with her wand, he turned into a fat, doughy coachman who had the smartest whiskers eyes ever beheld. After that, she said to Cinderella, Go again into the garden and you will find six lizards behind the watering pot. Bring them to me. The godmother turned them into six footmen. Then she said to Cinderella, Well, here it is an entire equipage fit to go to the ball with. Are you happy? Oh yes, Cinderella cried. But how can I go to the ball dressed in these nasty rags. Her godmother only just touched her with her wand and at the same instant her clothes were turned into gold and silver, all beset with the most beautiful jewels. Also, the fairy godmother gave her a pair of glass shoes, the prettiest in the whole world. Cinderella got up into her coat, but her godmother, above all things, commanded her not to stay after midnight, telling her that if she stayed one moment longer, the coat would be a pumpkin again, her horses would turn into mice, her coachman into a rat, and her beautiful dress into the old nasty rags. She promised her godmother that she would not fail of leaving the ball before midnight, and then away she drove, scarcely able to contain herself of joy. The king's son, who was told that a great princess, whom nobody knew was coming, ran off to receive her. He gave her his hand as she liked it out of the coat. He led her into the ball among all the company, there was immediately a profound silence. They left off dancing and the violins ceased to play. Nothing was then heard 
but a confused noise of Wow! How beautiful she is! The king himself, old as he was, could not help watching her and telling the queen softly that it was a long time since he had seen such a beautiful and lovely creature. Cinderella danced so gracefully and the king's son was always by her and never ceased his compliments and kind speeches to her. To whom all this was so far from being tiresome that she quite forgot what her godmother had recommended to her, so that she at last counted the clock striking twelve when she took it to be no more than eleven. She then rose up and fled as nimble as a deer. The prince followed but could not overtake her. She left behind one of her glass slippers, which the prince took up most carefully. She got home quite out of breath, and in her nasty old clothes, having nothing left her of all her finery but one of the little slippers, fell off to that she dropped. The guards at the palace gate were asked if they had seen a princess go out, but they said that they had seen just a young girl very meanly dressed and who had more the air of a poor country woman than a gentlewoman. After a few days, the king's son proclaimed by the sound of a trumpet that he would marry her whose foot the slipper would just fit. They whom he employed began to try it upon the princesses, then the duchesses and all the court, but in vain. It was brought to the two sisters, who did all they possibly could to thrust their foot into the sleeper, but they could not effect it. Cinderella, who saw all of this and knew it was her sleeper, said to them laughing, Let me see if it will not fit me. Her sisters burst out laughing and began to banter her. The gentleman who was sent to try a sleeper looked at Cinderella and finding her very pretty, he said, It is that by the orders everyone has to try the shoe. He obliged Cinderella to sit down and putting the slipper to her foot, he found it went on very easily and fitted her as if it had been made of wax. The astonishment her two sisters were in was excessively great, but still abundantly greater when Cinderella pulled out of her pocket the other shoe and put it on her foot. Thereupon in came her godmother, who having touched her with her wand, made them richer and more magnificent than any of other clothes she had before. Now her two sisters found her to be that fine, beautiful lady whom they had seen at the ball. They threw themselves at her feet and begged pardon for all the ill treatment they had made her undergo. Cinderella took them up and as she embraced them, she said, I forgive you with all my heart. And she desired them always to love her. She married the prince and they lived happily ever after.